Hi, it's API Days Helsinki here again, and it's a uh, future mobility data disaster with Oliver Thumb from Xapix. But um, yeah, you had something more positive to start uh, with than something very disastrous. So go ahead, Oliver. Uh, yeah, hi, welcome. Uh, I'm Oliver Tan. Um, I'm, uh, uh, I'm the co-founder of Zapix, um, which is a data integration company. Um, yeah, something positive um, is uh, this presentation, actually. Um, I use this new format. Um, I've done presentations before, but of course not in, in this format. I use that to experiment a little bit, and uh, I'm, I'm curious to see how you like my uh, collage effectively I came up with of uh, videos and, uh, and images and memes and snippets. I want it to be entertaining. I want it to be fun. Um, we have uh, 25 minutes um, to make my experience. So I stayed, stayed away from, from the text heavy slides and I hope you enjoy that. So um, I hope to make your um, Corona life a little bit more interesting looking at a screen right now. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm, I'm Oliver Tan. Um, I'm, uh, I co-founded Zapix. My Twitter handle is uh, PO Software. Um, our company's Twitter handle is uh, Zapix underscore IO. Um, we are a data integration company. Uh, so we sell data integration solution to bigger automotive customers, which is how I came to this talk. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, uh, our tool, allows you to, to build pipelines and like have a, have a nice UI. It's kind of a low code tool. Um, you should definitely check it out, of course. And um, yeah, and, and let me know more feedback. That would be awesome. Um, we're based out of Berlin. I'm based out of Berlin. I'm actually born here. Um, and uh, yeah, spent most of my uh, career as a, as a web developer. Um, now as a, as a CTO slash lead engineer um, at Zapix and um, this is uh, basically where I uh, collected most of my experience uh, with this data integration uh, topic and more recently with the future of mobility, uh, which is the first thing um, I want to talk about in this slide. Um, since I'm having this little bit of a provocative title, uh, I want to I wanna first of all talk about what the future of mobility actually is, right? Maybe, maybe not all of you are um, from, from the mobility uh, from the mobility space. Um, and then secondly, uh, the later um, part of my talk will be about data and uh, the data disaster and the tooling around that. And of course, I'm going to talk about how to fix that, of, uh, of course. But let's start with uh, future mobility. Um, mobility uh, covers a, uh, a basic human need <clears throat> uh, to get from A to B. Uh, be that in your city, be that in, in your country, and in you like internationally. Um, public transportation, uh, big car manufacturers um, that are around for for more than a hundred years. <coughs> it's a excuse me, it's a billion dollar industry, of course. Um, uh, so many players, such a rich supplier ecosystem, very important also for the economy of of my country, Germany, of course, and. Um, since you have so many engineers and so many smart people involved in this industry, of course, you get a lot of vision, a lot of visions of what, what the future may look like. So I, I assembled this little collage here of marketing videos and uh, what, what people imagine um, the future of mobility to be like. Um, all of them see it sort of like as, as a connected, uh, integrated space, right? Like you see all these robots and, and, and cities and cars that talk to each other frictionless uh, cars that drive autonomously um, that know exactly where, where one another is uh, to avoid collisions and, and stuff like that. End-to-end um, -end solutions, uh, smart city, smart country, uh, you have um, a, a huge uh, ecosystem around uh, open data and about um, yeah and, and, and about making the cities programmable, making the cars progr programmable. Uh, app stores, um, the user experience inside the car, um, entertainment, what happens if, if the driver doesn't need to drive anymore, right? He becomes a consumer um, who has nothing to do for a couple of hours. Um, so that's going to be a very interesting space and, uh, and uh, a, lot of, um, a lot of market players um, are active here and uh, come up with new ideas and new concepts. And uh, I want us to listen in maybe um, to, to some of them. 
With the evolution of 5G, the automotive and telecommunications industries are working to create a connected, cooperative, automated mobility. Connected vehicles are enabling easier, safer and hassle-free road travel, while bringing in-vehicle infotainment to the next level. To improve traffic safety, 5G Cellular to Everything technology is connecting vehicles to other vehicles, to infrastructure, to vulnerable road users, and to network services across any distance. The power of 5G is enhancing assisted driving and paving the way for fully automated driving experiences. Nokia is already helping automotive manufacturers optimize their local and global fleets with the creation of a secure and scalable global Internet of Things infrastructure. And by managing a wide range of technologies and applications that support connected vehicles, it brings the power of advanced analytics to driver experience and vehicle diagnostics and maintenance. It's all part of Nokia's end-to-end -end 5G network and partnerships, designed to boost the efficiency and productivity of global assets and enhance the world we live in. This is Nokia 5G. Deliver the extraordinary. All right. I hope you're as fired up as I am right now. Um, great vision. It would be awesome if all of that comes true, right? I'm not affiliated to any of the companies uh, whose marketing material I'm displaying here. Uh, just as a little disclaimer. Um, but this is the vision. Like this is, you, you get a sense, right, at this point, um, where, where we want to go. And uh, next, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the challenges that will come ahead uh, with pursuing that direction. Um, because of course, uh, we're, yeah, we're, we're significant, uh, we have a sig significant headway to make, uh, if, if we want to get there and, um, talking about this, uh, I, I introduce always here in the right upper corner, um, one of my favorite, uh, TV shows and their characters, um, TV shows called IT crowd. If you're into British humor, I definitely in, uh, would, would recommend to watch it anyway. Um, for me, they're, they're sort of like a little bit the, the sentiment uh, thermometer uh, here. So um, yeah, keep, keep, a, keep a close eye on them uh, while we, while we browse through the slides. Um, as I'm going to talk about the challenges um, that we'll see in IT uh, pursuing, pursuing this huge vision. Um, all right, uh, let's simplify this um, to, to the most atomic level. Um, in the upper row, we see two cars. They're exactly the same, right? They're from the same manufacturer, the same variant. They're the same, they're the same model, probably uh, pretty much, pretty much uh, maybe from the same factory or something like that. Um, they can exchange data just as we've seen in these, uh, in, in these commercials. Um, then we come to the second row. And as an IT person, it said, okay, well, it's going to get a little bit more tricky. It's, it seems to be a different model, maybe from the same manufacturer. Uh, maybe it's just a different variant of the same model. We don't know yet, um, but maybe they're produced in different factories already. So uh, engineers there may make different decisions than other engineers in the other team. So um, things, things could cause friction there, right? Like this is usually how it starts. Um, the canvas, uh, which is like the central nervous system in the, in the car, um, receive maybe receives different messages in one or the other way and you, you need to find a way to cope with that um, and then third row uh, different cars different manufacturers uh, probably manufactured in different years so maybe one car is like 10 years younger uh, than the other car and technology evolved uh, during time so you're going to have the classical legacy uh, data exchange problem and um, and this is what we're going to talk about um, pretty much the entire talk. So this is like a light introduction, right? Because on the next slide, um, I'm going to talk effectively about the same thing, but I'm going to zoom out one level. So let's do this. Um, we've, in the previous slide, we've been looking at the red circle effectively. So like a couple of different cars. We have one new concept in here, which is um, a an old car that doesn't participate in any of that and they're still going to be around they're still going to be needed to be accounted for um in our infrastructure decision making right um they're not going to go away that easily um and uh, yeah we have different cars different brands different types of legacy cars that are still going to be on the roads 
um, we'll have a lot of different manufacturers, we'll, we'll have things that are not cars. Uh, so there's gonna be trucks around, there's gonna be, there's gonna be buses and like minibuses and, uh, and there's gonna be motorcycles and scooters, there's gonna be uh, construction equipment, tractors, um, there's going to be maybe drones. There's like this whole air taxi thing going on right now where, where things, where these, these flying taxis start and land at random places and stuff. Um, I don't know, maybe planes. I, I have really no idea what the future will bring, right? But all of these things in this connected world, they all need to talk to each other and to, the, to these amazing smart cities and like this infrastructure we've been seeing. So yeah, uh, long story short, everything needs to talk to everything. Um, that's going to be hard. Next slide, one more level of zooming out. Um, we've been looking at the red circles again on the last slide. The rest is new. Uh, upper left corner, we see a lot of different logos, the biggest car manufacturers in the world. There's like roughly a hundred of them. Um, each of these, each of these, right? Producing trucks, cars, maybe different palette of vehicles. Um, each of these, having this, this time gap problem that the cars are gonna evolve over time. Like there's gonna be cars from 10 years ago, there's gonna be uh, uh, cars from 10 years in the future, all need to talk to each other from all of these manufacturers to all of the other versions of the other manufacturers. All right, um, and we have like uh, platforms in the middle um, that, that try to address this, uh, this topic already, right? Like make, make your life a little bit easier and like get stuff deployed faster. Um, but also that's not a homogeneous market. Um, we're seeing solutions from AWS. Uh, we're seeing the Microsoft Conne Connected Vehicle Platform, for example, or the SAP competitor, uh, the Vehicles Network. Um, there's many more. So these, these are just three examples. And like in the, in the, lower, uh, in the lower right corner, um, we see that uh, even like on-car sensors uh, do have the same problem. So you're, you're looking at a connected car uh, providers and car-to-car uh, -car communication providers. And even, even this space is already quite crowded a little bit and will evolve over time. So hardware is not exchanged that easily. If these sensors are built in, they're gonna stay there for a while. Like you have update procedures and so forth, but as IT engineers, we of course also know um, that this is like a, a complicated topic at times, um, especially if you have vehicles driving around um, that you can't just, that are just not connected to the internet at all at any point in time, right? All right. Um, so we're here. Um, we're here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to tell you uh, I have to zoom out even one level further. Um, we've been looking at the, at the red circled uh, space before, um, and it's, it's still just been a subset of what we're talking about. Um, this is the tech startup and supplier ecosystem, at least parts of it. Like you all love these slides probably. Um, they're nice and handy and they have like a lot of logos and they're kind of cool. Um, yes, but there's like a couple of hundreds logos on there um, of automotive suppliers and um, companies catering that market and they have different products and they all need to talk to each other and they all need to uh, they all need to be made work with each other and all of these manufacturers that you've seen on the last slide, they have different sets of these tools in production and they all need to make this accessible and make this work together at some point. So this is the situation and this is what we need to, to, uh, to find solutions for, right? Like this is, this is the real world um, of, of uh, challenges that we, we have ahead. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's a lot. But uh, yeah, I've, I've zoomed out as much as we can. Um, I just have one more slide on, on this mobility topic, um, which is uh, just stating the fact that we still keep inventing new stuff. Um, so we see the Gartner hype cycle here uh, with 5G uh, and, and vehicle advanced UX and micro mobility and so forth and smart city um, on, on top of the curve, uh, having the biggest hype right now and a couple of things being a bit further ahead. Um, it's, it's a complicated space. We, I haven't even touched all of these, these topics in my previous slides. Uh, if you want to read more about it, I can really recommend uh, reading my co-founder's white paper. He's an absolute mobility geek um, and you can hit him up with any kind of mobility question. He's definitely more of the expert when it comes to mobility than I am. Because my, uh, my bigger topic as a software person is more the data side of things. So I know um, more of the internals of, 
uh, data integration software of that market um, of the underlying technologies, which are a lot. I'm sorry, I can't give you a break or anything. Um, it just it just keeps going. Um, I, I wrote up for um, for our onboarding procedure. Uh, this this glossary of API terms like API design rest uh, versus soap and, and stuff like that right like file formats like description formats schema validations API standards protocols so this is all the diversity we're dealing with on the data side when once you are like one car manufacturer let's say who went with the decision to expose uh, their um, their data uh, from from their vehicles to to someone else um, you have like all these databases, white column stores, graph databases, data warehouses, ETL solutions, event streaming solutions, uh, NoSQL databases, SQL databases, and uh, all these different topics to cover. And trust me, I've seen enough in this industry. All of them are being used somewhere. So you kind of have to know about all of them. Uh, if you don't, you, you have an incomplete picture of the market. Um, and uh, and may not be able to help your customer as much as you would like to. But that's not it. Uh, so even if you understood and like know deeper about all the use cases and all the applications and all the real world, um, yeah, uh, benefits and challenges from all these solutions, you still have like a lot of providers who build on top, right? So all these like databases that I've shown to you, these are like the biggest products in the market. Actually, the landscape looks more like this. Um, data AI landscape, I found, I found this one uh, somewhere on the internet, um, which has like probably like 300 different startups on there. Um, the logos are so small, we can't barely see it. I want you to look at one logo though. Um, of course, like just follow the big green arrow. Uh, you'll, run, you'll land right on Zapix on uh, Midi Majawi's, uh, um, slide uh, of the API ecosystem. You may know that guy. He's running API days. <laughs> um, of course, you will know him. And yeah, and uh, and the elevator guys, of course. Um, that's me. Yay, is Apex rocks. Um, we're we're on our way to the top. Startup talk. Um, all right. Um, enough self promotion. Shamelessly. Um, let's look at uh, the open data landscape, which uh, is also part of. Uh, this this bigger uh, future mobility uh, space, right? Because all the cities, they're not going to be run by companies. They're going to be run by by governments. And uh, the way governments work is by legislation. And uh, yeah, we, we struggle with that. Um, we struggle with that. Uh, in, in Europe alone, uh, even though we have a shared market, we have uh, 20, uh, 26, now 27 uh, different countries. Um, one dropped out lately. Uh, you may have heard of it. Um, 27 different countries, different legislations. Uh, we have even more languages than that. Uh, I shared a linguistic lab, uh, map of Europe uh, in, in one corner. Um, we have, uh, and, and, and Europe is not even, not even the craziest. Um, Zimbabwe, um, this is your, your fact of the day. Uh, that's what you, can, uh, what you can tell your colleagues about tomorrow, has 16 official languages. Um, I, I heard of the fewest of them actually, um, but they all exist and, and they all, allowed to use that in, in government, right? Um, we have uh, a variety of, of open data portals. So not even for that shared market, we have agreed on a, um, on a, on a common way to exchange data uh, between cities or be between cities and companies. So I'm, 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 I'm I shared here um, a, a nice find uh, on the German open uh, data portal um, that illustrates two problems. Um, one, uh, the discoverability of data. Um, so yeah, they have this nice search, um, but not all German states or entities are participating in that data portal. Um, so you have like a limited selection of, of inventory even. Um, since there's not really a common strategy among the federal states in Germany, um, that means these entities that are uh, publishing data to the portal are publishing very different data, like super different kinds of data, um, like, like Mörs, which is a, a medium-sized town in somewhere in, in Northern Westphalia, 
Um, and they are, uh, they are kind enough and like detailed enough to publish um, all the dogs that live in their city. So um, I, feel a very, I feel very German looking at this, uh, that someone keeps track of, of people's pets, but actually in Germany, this is a dog tax, whatever. Um, so you see uh, the CSV that I opened uh, in the screenshot. If you look at it, it's not very machine readable. Like um, it's, it's not a very good CSV and uh, you'll, you'll have to write uh, um, a scraper to, to scrape this um, if you think it's worth it. Um, and this is what a lot of the data looks like in these open data portals that are state run uh, because legislation usually just says you have to publish XYZ data or as much as you can. Or in America, it's a little bit more structured and I say like every, when the taxpayer paid for it, then we have to publish that data. Um, so yeah, in, in Germany, we're, we're definitely fighting that struggle and I know uh, other countries are, are uh, fighting uh, similar struggles. Um, and, uh, and then we're not even done with that because there's still like countries like China who have different alphabets. And um, we, I don't know if we take our car to China, um, theoretically that's possible to drive your car from Germany to, to China. Yeah, your your car will have to know how to deal with uh, Chinese open data uh, coming into a new town. And yeah, um, talking about towns, um, not even like in, in Germany, not even towns uh, amongst each other can agree on on anything. So um, you'll what what's what's the use, right? If you have if you have an open data application in your car that tells you where the nearest parking spot is, for example, and you rely on uh, city data. Uh, to publish that so you can read it and you know what uh, parking slots are free in town. Um, that still means if there's only three, uh, if there's only three cities in Germany who are doing that, then you have a problem going to all the other cities in Germany and you can't use it, right? And that's frustrating as a customer. Or you have the other problem and all the 10,000 cities in Germany, they're all producing that, but all in different formats, like a CSV, as JSON, I don't know, like as PDF. There's a lot of cities who actually publish PDFs um, and, and consider that open data. So um, yeah, then the company making that product has to, has to, to scrape 10,000 different file formats and like build a common database and that's just one country. So yeah, that's, that's what we're dealing with in the open data world. Um, I hope I didn't overwhelm you and frustrate you. It's, it's still a very, very interesting space uh, to be in. I certainly enjoy it a lot still. Um, I'm doing this for five years. So there's a couple of, uh, of solutions actually, or approaches um, we came up with are uh, kind of obvious, but I want to write them out here. Um, one, one is uh, certainly business data standards. Um, we don't see a lot of them actually. Um, there's a couple of them. I have uh, detailed out one example that I came across in my career called uh, IATA. Um, that's the airline, um, uh, airline lobby group, the international one. Um, with the NDC standard. Um, I detailed that out in the blog post. Uh, read it if, you, if you're interested. Um, there's a lot more information uh, in it that I can recite here in my 25-minute uh, speaking slot. Um, yes, that's an example for an industry-led standardization initiative. To, to summarize that, right, like usually um, these produce pretty mixed results because the uh, incentive structure usually is pretty weak for these ind industry players to come up with solutions all by themselves. Um, we've seen a couple of, uh, of um, good examples about that, like uh, the open API initiative, right? Like where uh, a lot of data integrators came together and like agreed on one format, great. Uh, I would love to see more of that. In reality, uh, these initiatives usually uh, move rather slow driven by enterprise culture, um, often distorted by corporate politics. Um, when legislation comes into place, like uh, for um, the banking standards, for example, after 2008, um, things move quicker. Um, that certainly speeds stuff up. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, um, you lack a little bit of industry insight. Um, like for banking, that was not so much of a problem. Um, but if we see this at a broader scale, right, like the government producing like a lot of data standards that might become an issue that they will have to have a lot of industry insights. Um, but anyway, um, I, I, I rather believe in the legislator uh, um, uh, approach if you're asking me. But of course, um, and, and this is, uh, yeah, 
um, something I know, of course, uh, too know a lot about. Um, let me let me just uh, play that video for you. Of it's a very recent uh, demo of our tool because we too are a data integration tool. Um, I do believe in data integration tools. Um, I believe data integration needs to become a lot cheaper, needs to become a lot faster, uh, be, needs to become a lot easier so more people can do it. Um, if it's only software uh, developers or software consultants being able to do these data integrations, then we, we can't move fast enough for all these challenges that I outlined, right? Like all these things needing to talk to each other um, and the growing ecosystem. So we're still building stuff on top and like new companies emerge. Um, there's a whole new generation of tools, like we see a lot of um, local tools um, like ours that are becoming better and better. Uh, you have drag and drop and like uh, easy formulas and stuff like that, almost like office tools. Um, live data pipelines that are relevant for APIs that are 24 seven um, online ETL tools. Um, and we see like open data platforms, uh, open data soft, for example, comes to my mind. Um, so they make, um, yes, these smart cities, they're, they life a lot easier. And I think they, they certainly contribute to helping that uh, problem. If you want to read more about this, there's another link for you. Um, check it out on low code integration, also on our company blog. Um, and the third part that I find important is education. And if you're watching this and if, if you're hearing this right now, then you're in the right spot because like API days, of course, uh, yay. And like API CNIO, um, the official blog, they're great places uh, to start. Like make your API product, like think it from a product perspective. Who are my customers? Be customer centric uh, when designing uh, interfaces for, for this. So you, this is what, all, what this conference is about, right? Like entrepreneurship techniques, I think certainly help like these corporations. Um, they, they need to learn to iterate faster over products to keep up with the pace of the API economy. Um, yeah, share your learnings, educate others. Um, yeah, and uh, follow the Zabbix blog. Uh, and, and there's a lot of others, of course, um, uh, but that's the one I'm, I'm, I'm writing on. So um, yeah, reach out to me. So yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Um, future mobility is data disaster and how to fix it. Um, I, hope, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know feedback and uh, I'm giving it back to the host then. Yeah, thank you, Oliver. It was really good. Uh, so we kind of took a deep dive first in the previous talk into public transportation and open data and now kind of from more from a uh, private sector and, and, and cars point of view and there is by the way going to be a, a 5g and and uh, mobility uh, talk in the second day as the last talk so i think this ties up really uh, good but i think it was really interesting that you had that generation uh, kind of communication problem with cars. So how do you see this um, evolving? Like you, you see that the public sector needs to have an insight on what's going to happen in the future, but does the industry have enough insight of like how to actually develop these kind of in a way sustainable <laughs> uh, data models and, and technologies so that they actually do stand the time of the car the physical car where they need to be in? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 they certainly do have the expertise. Um, the, the, the other question is like, do they have uh, the, the resources, right, to do all this? Um, so, um, yeah, I think, um, I, I believe that more tools will emerge. I think that more tools and more specialized tools um, will certainly um, help these car manufacturers move quicker. Um, I hope they bring up the courage to actually purchase these um, because uh, sometimes these corporates still live in that mindset, oh, we better want to do it ourselves. Like we have so many IT people, yeah. why can't we just do it ourselves, right? Yeah, of course you can. Of course you can, right? You have smart people, you know the industry, um, but if it takes you two years, like yeah. the industry will be somewhere else. Like, this is moving too. I, I, I was going to I was going to point out that because there there are a lot of talks here in API Days Helsinki this year about ecosystems and, and that's kind of the thing that uh, it's nice to believe that the technology will be around for three to five years, that you are making architectural decisions that are kind of solid for three to five years. But the the reality is that they are they're probably solid like two years as you said but on the other hand volvo uh going in one api conference said that hey we have to plan 
that the next version update for this particular car and its API will be like in uh, 20 years. <laughs> so that's kind of a, a time gap unless you plan for some modularity and, and some kind of replaceable stuff there, like you're saying. Hey, uh, it was a really great and interesting um, talk. And since you were uh, showing basically videos, so I just have to show this and you were. Yeah, so that was just my two cents because you pointed out to Mehdi and the API landscape. So. I hide it real Mehdi. Yeah, exactly. Okay, thank you. And it was a really uh, great pleasure to have you here virtually in Helsinki. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you.